Okay, we're ready to get started with the press conference with North Dakota State student athletes. A uh, reminder that when you want to ask a question, uh, flag down one of the microphones and give us your affiliation and ask the questions to a specific student athlete if possible. Today we have with us Lawrence Alexander, Taylor Braun, Trayvon Wright, and Marshall Bjorklund. First question. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Thanks, Ellie. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. Taylor, uh, you're from Oregon. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're back in your part of the country? Uh, I don't know enough about the politics of Washington and Oregon to know if you feel at home or not, but do you? Um, I'm a good 400 miles away from home still, so there's, there's some distance. But um, I'll, have, I'll have some a good amount of family members making the trip because it's easier to get to Spokane than uh, Fargo. So um, it's nice being back in the Northwest, but yeah, I'm still far from home. Okay, next. You have questions? So I can find the mic. <laughs> uh, Jeff Kolpak with the Forum in Fargo. A couple things. Taylor, uh, a lot of family, friends. What are you expecting? Yeah, um, I have some, some classmates making the trip, a bunch of family. Um, I'm thinking like around 30 people or so. Okay, and for the other three, is this your Frisco? I'll start with you, Marshall. You know, the football thing got on the bandwagon with the Frisco. Do you guys feel like you're doing your part with the basketball? Um, yeah, obviously this is uh, the biggest tournament that everyone, you know, everyone in NCAA is trying to get to in the basketball, and so um, it's kind of hard to compare it to the Frisco uh, with the football team, but obviously it's a pretty, pretty big accomplishment. Trayvon? Uh, I say yeah. Uh, it's our main goal for the year is to get in here and try to win a couple of games here. So, yeah. Lawrence? Um, I say yeah, too. Like Marshall was just saying, uh, it's not the same thing. Um, but at the same time, you know, it was one goal is get to Spokane. I mean, not Spokane, but get to the tournament and hopefully win a couple of games. Okay. Jamal Spencer, Valley News Live. This one's for Marshall and Trayvon. Um, Taylor's mentioned wanting to be a team that doesn't just get here and is one and done. Um, what are you guys mentally, or how are you prepared to go into this tournament trying to win more than just a game? Marshall, you want to start? Um, you know, to be honest with you, we're not really preparing any other, other way than we have all season. Um, you know, we've played high major teams um, in the past. Um, we've been here for quite a few years, and so um, as far as preparation, you know, we're just, you know, we know they're going to be a bit, little bit longer, um, maybe a little more athletic, but, uh, you know, we're going to play our game. We're preparing just like we have every game, and, you know, it's worked out pretty, pretty good this far. Trayvon? Uh, just keep things consistent. I mean, my mindset's the same as every other game. Go out and try to win. Uh, coaches the same way, too. Just uh, prepare the same way, go over the same schemes, and different things we got to do on the court to win. Josh Swanson, Vice and Illustrated in Fargo. Lawrence, you've had an opportunity now, I'm assuming, to watch some tape of Oklahoma and prepare for them this week. How do you feel that the Bison stack up against the Sooners? Uh, we feel like it's uh, pretty good. Uh, watching tape, we feel like they're kind of, their style of play kind of plays something like along uh, Notre Dame's. Uh, they kind of spread you out, penetrate, try to get flat footed threes. But we believe if we just sit down, play defense, stick to our principles, we'd be able to come out with a W. Thanks. Um, for any for any of you guys who who think about these kind of things, uh, it's become uh, pretty routine for a twelve to upset a five, and you guys are in a twelve five matchup. And we saw, I guess, yesterday, um, President Obama even is picking you guys to win this game. First of all, the, the Obama pick does that put any more pressure on on the way you think about this kind of thing, and and maybe why uh, why twelves are so frequently upsetting fives. Taylor, you want to try that one? Um, you know, I don't think I don't think. Uh, these more higher profile people picking us to win changes our mindset. I definitely think it. Uh, we're not going to catch Oklahoma off guard. We're I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to get their their best best effort and best game. But um, you know we've we both teams have earned the right to be in this this position and um, both teams are preparing hard and it's going to be a 
very good, exciting game on Thursday. We're all looking forward to it. Marshall, do you have any thoughts on the 12 versus 5? Um, yeah, obviously, like Taylor said, it's kind of kind of cool to watch watch Sports Center and see President Obama picking us. But uh, you know, there's a lot of teams that really haven't followed us all all year that are picking us. You know, we the guys in our locker room, um, you know, we know what we're capable of and uh, we know what we're made of. And so, yeah, it's kind of cool to see that. But uh, you know, like he said, we're gonna we're gonna get Oklahoma's best shot. Anything to add, Trayvon? Mm, no. Lawrence? Not at all. Okay. Tim Booth with the AP. Taylor, I know that you were pretty close to signing with a D2 school. Um, what, what, what school was that, and then what was the process in which you ended up in at North Dakota State? Um, it, was, it was Western Oregon University, and, uh, and I was just looking. I was kind of just holding out, hoping something, something good came up and somebody would give me an opportunity, and um, less and less schools. Uh, well, schools kept saying, you know, I need to make a decision. These are D2 schools, kept saying I need to make a decision. Um, and they stopped, started giving those scholarship offers away um, because I was, I was holding out for something better that I thought I was capable of. Um, it was getting to be, let's see, end of April of my senior year. So, you know, it was uh, <laughs> it's time for me to make a decision because, um, you know, you got to get up there in the summer and start working. So um, I was about a couple days away from signing with Western Oregon. Um, then I got a phone call um, about North Dakota State. They just heard through the grapevine that uh, I was a possible player, you know, that might be able to contribute. Um, I sent them a game tape. The next week I went up there. I went up there finals week for them uh, in the beginning of May. Um, so it was, it was very dead. Not a lot of college atmosphere going around, but um, they offered me a scholarship and a uh, you know, to be honest, I wasn't overly thrilled with the uh, just everything about it, but I know I want to be a Division One player, and this was a um, opportunity I was given, and I took it, and it has it has been amazing. I've I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah, Taylor uh, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma, and for a lot of us that you know have not been to Fargo or been around, all about all we know is the is the movie. What you guys have done in the, on the football side and now what you've been doing on the basketball side, is, have you found that that's been changing perceptions about North Dakota and about Fargo? Yeah. Um, we, uh, I mean, I, I, see, I see our football team highlights on uh, ESPN all the time, the, the Scott Van Pelt show, uh, the football helmet's always up on that. Um, so we, we've got a lot more um, national exposure as a community, and I mean, Obviously, a lot of that has to do with the success of our football team. Um, but, uh, you know, this class that we have right now, we all came in the same time as the football team started having success, too. So we've uh, both, both programs, you know, we came in together and um, we're close with a lot of the football players. And I think both both teams um, have done a very good job of, you know, putting Fargo on the map and um, being a name to be recognized, I guess. Lawrence, what do you think about the national attention North Dakota State's getting? Um, I say it's very positive for our program. I mean, like Taylor was just explaining, uh, a lot of people don't know a lot about uh, Fargo or the, our school in DSU. So uh, I believe that our football team and our basketball team is doing a good job by putting uh, Fargo on the map, getting people a chance to see our sports and our program. Yeah, John Hoover with the Tulsa World in Oklahoma. I'd like to ask Marshall to follow up on what Taylor was talking about, about putting North Dakota State on the map, putting Fargo on the map, um, what the football team has done. How, would, how much would the basketball team like to contribute that? Because you know how, um, how visible the NCAA tournament is in, in a 12-5 upset. Yeah, you know, that would uh, that definitely put put the basketball program at NDSU on the, on the map. And, um yeah, with the football and basketball combined, I think we have the most wins this year, don't we? Um, with them combined, and so um, you know, I think it's you know, the combination of the two of them. It's I think it's really helped the uh, helped the university get attention and um, having college game day out out in Fargo for football, and um, yeah, it's just been it's been a been a, a joy ride for us. It's been fun. 
Next question. Okay, I think that covers it. We'll have Coach Phillips up in just a little bit. And now we'll open it up for questions for Saul Phillips, head coach at North Dakota State. No questions? Oh, okay. We, uh, <laughs> uh, quick press conference. Can't get out that easy. Uh, John Hoover with the Tulsa World. Um, it's obviously uh, pretty trendy for uh, for 12 seed to get a, to get picked in brackets over fives. Uh, I don't know if that um, you know the, suddenly you guys are almost like a favorite in this thing. But when President Obama picks you on national TV, <laughs> picks North Dakota State to upset Oklahoma, how does that change how you uh, approach the guy's mindset? Well, if, if at all, uh, I, I promise you that we don't view ourselves as anything but an underdog and. Uh, you know, you, you look at it from any different angle, uh, right down to their coach who's taken five, five programs to the NCAA tournament. Uh, they're, they're the favorite. They know it. We know it. They can get mad if they want at the national pundits. Here's the, here's the funny thing. I'd like to know how many people have picked us have actually seen us play. I mean, come on. I didn't see – I didn't see – well, Digger saw us play. I didn't see some of those guys uh, – Obama was not in any of our games. I would have known that one. He didn't make his way to Fargo to see us play. Uh, five twelves are always trendy. It's the way it's always going to be. Uh, you know, we've got some statistics on paper that make us stand out a little bit. The field goal percentage, in particular, uh, the number of upper class when we have that's that's what people are going on. I mean, like I say, I let's have them dissect our program right now because I think they'd probably struggle to go for more than a minute and a half. Saul, Jamal Spencer, Valley News Live. What would a win tomorrow mean for the program and for NDSU? It means we get to play together again. Honestly, that's all you can think about. You can't get crazy with what could come next. You, you, it's as simple as this. I love this group of young men. They are a blast to coach. And Jamal, you've been there every step of the way. You know how I get along with these guys. And you know how much I love Revel, absolutely love coaching them. Uh, I get to keep coaching them as a group if we win. That's it. That To me, I'll, I'll think about the possibilities in terms of what it means long term for our program after this is over. But for right now, I want to keep coaching these guys. I'm having a blast. Uh, Jeff Kopak with the Forum. Your players are talking about the success of the program this year with football game day, uh, the whole nine yards. What's that been like from your chair? Well, first of all, is that an Edgewood golf course? That's a good golf course, is it, Jeff? Okay, got a plug for them. Maybe I can get a free round. Uh, the uh, it, it's fun to see your friends succeed, and I think with with this program, one of the biggest things that I, it's genuine. I mean, again, Jeff. We're darn near neighbors. We kind of are neighbors. You see how we get along. You see as a staff uh, up close the relationship that I have with Gene, that I have with Darren Mueller, our softball coach, that I have with uh, Todd Brown, our baseball coach. Uh, it's fun to see friends do well. It is. And uh, as far as, I mean, our athletic department has kind of knocked it out of the park this year by any means. You go from the the – basketball wins, football wins, to the fact that we raised, you know, finalized a $41 million campaign, or close to finalized. We're starting a $41 renovation arena. That's a, that's a decade for a lot of athletic departments. So it, it means, it, from my perspective, it's been even more amazing because I've, got I've gotten to see it from the inside. Josh Swanson buys an illustrated Coach, after the Summer League Championship, you had mentioned you were going to make sure that the guys had a, a blast at this tournament, stayed loose. Um, after the, the excitement of the tournament announcement has, has died down, how have your guys been doing this week as far as taking in uh, the moment that they have right now? You know, I, I asked him today, uh, right after watching some film, I said, are you guys enjoying this? And then they went on telling story after story about goofy phone calls they've gotten or uh, text messages or maybe an email from a girl that dumped them right before prom saying I should have probably changed, not 
uh, gone that direction. Uh, yeah, everybody's got their stories, and, and they've, I hope we've stayed loose. I think we've tried to. Uh, they're having fun. They're, I, I don't know how loose they were up here because <laughs> Taylor Braun, I don't think, is quite as at home in a press conference as some. Marshall Bjorklund is more comfortable in front of 3,000 pigs than a group of – he's a pig farmer. So just so I'm, not, I'm not calling anybody in here any names. Uh, but, no, when we're alone and it's private, it's, it's, it's rolling pretty loose right now. Gary Namig of the Tulsa World. Saul, you're going to have to defend the three, obviously, tomorrow night. Is, is Oklahoma unique in the fact that they've got so many different guys who can, who can launch? And, and how worried are you about closing out on not just you know, a couple of guys who might be hot, but up to five or six sources there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a unique attack in that, that way. It's, it's difficult to figure out where your help's going to come from sometimes. Uh, I think we can lean a little bit on our experience against Denver in our league, who shot a ton of threes. In fact, the last regular season game of the year, um, they hit 15 threes against us in a game. We turned around and played them a week later down in Sioux Falls, and we held them to one. Uh, we don't get a mulligan this time. we got to play the first ball. So we better. We better. They, they are really good at attacking you off the dribble and freeing up guys flat-footed on the perimeter, as good as anybody we've faced Certainly, uh, yeah, we got it. We've got issues, but I think every 12 seed's got issues going in. That that's a key component to us. Yes, we've got to we've got to get them off that line. And we've got to make them uncomfortable. Mike McFeely, KFGO Radio in Fargo, also wearing Edgewood golf apparel, by the way. So I'll nice. give another shout. Nice. Um, you guys came out. I, I thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, a little bit tight in the title game uh, in the Summit League against IPFW. Do you expect that you're over that hump now? Now it's all fun and games. Well, I'll great. say this, that for us, in a lot of ways, and this is going to sound silly to people in this room, but when you're a mid-major and you're in a one-bid league, in a lot of ways, that conference tournament pre presents more pressure than the next step. Um, I know we were a lot looser when we played in Minneapolis with the 09 group than we were prior in Sioux Falls. We tried to stay loose both times. We did. But I'm telling you, if I'm looking at you look at NIT CBI games, and you can point to games where that team wasn't interested in playing anymore. It, it, it happens. They, everybody wants to make the big dance. This is the show. This is where you want to be. Uh, when, when you're dealing with that, and when you're dealing with the singular goal of these guys for four or five years has been to make it here, yeah, I, I was feeling tight. Uh, but... That seems to kind of the weights come off the shoulders a little bit. I, I just like this opportunity. This is fun. Yeah, so I'll be in from Tulsa. I want to ask you about uh, Oral Roberts. They got out of the Summit League. Make sure they're getting back in the Summit League. Who invited them back? I yeah, liked it no, better without them. That's, uh, w w tell me about the, the whole perception of the league now. You, you got a team that defects to another conference, and now they want back in. They're coming back in. Well, first of all, it's really good for our league. I say that, but it'd be really good for our league. I think that's what you're getting at. Uh, and I really like their staff. They're a class group. Uh, it's going to be fun having some friends back in the league. Uh, I think it says volumes for our league. I think our, our league has come a long ways. And quite honestly, last year at this time, if I was being completely truthful, I would have said that we're going to survive, but I couldn't have given you a template for how. Uh, Oral Roberts coming back. I think you got to – this is a league with upside. You know, you've got uh, some programs right now. UNO coming through this transition is doing pretty darn well already, and that's a, that's a really good mid-major situation to recruit to. IUPUI, moving to a new arena, very good situation. We're opening a new arena. I, it's really positive. Uh, it's positive for our league. I hope it's positive for ORU. I know it's positive for North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. That's that's a lot of positives. You think there'll be any animosity about the whole defector thing? You guys left and you were seeking greener pastures. And I've got animosity. They're coming back. Like I say, we no one ever likes seeing them in Sioux Falls. Uh, no, I mean, I'm pretty close with the guys in our conference. And I don't think that's ever been mentioned. Yeah, you're a little miffed when they leave, but they want to come back. Great. 
they like us again. I, I don't think anybody has, I shouldn't speak for everybody. I know I don't have a chip on my shoulder at, over that at all. I'm, it's good. Hopefully we can build this thing in a multiple bid league. That's the ultimate goal. And, uh, you know, at least it's faint on the horizon right now. I mean, it's not completely out of the realm of possibility down the road. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoman. Uh, saw we talked Monday night. Yep. I fly up here Tuesday, wake up this morning, and read in the Spokane paper that uh, they fired the Washington State coach, and they're throwing your name out as a strong candidate. Is that, <laughs> is that just a, a product of success when, you, when yeah. your name gets tossed around for, for jobs like that? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. I've received no, con uh, no, contact, for, I've received no contact from anyone. <laughs> And you know what? I really like my boss, and I really like my school. And if I was thinking about anything other than this group of guys right now, that would be about as selfish as you can get. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fun seeing your name. And I you, know, you got to understand, we're up in Fargo, man. I, I get on the Inforum. I get on, you know, KVLY stuff. I get on Bison Illustrated. But to see some national people talking about us, that's fun. And they're not just talking about me. That our team did this. You know, as far as when we went in 09, a lot of people, this is Miles' team. You're winning with Miles' team. Great, great, great. You know what? This is Dave Richmond's team as much as it's my team, just as much as it was my team back then as it was Miles' team. It, we're a group. You can't do it alone. Uh, I certainly know after reading the CBS article on how I was the 53rd best player, I couldn't get there by myself. I, uh, how about that? You know what? The guys are all giving me heck about it. 53rd best player in the tournament. I, I was like, yeah, boy, that's, that's just not right. Then I kind of walked away going, 53, that's pretty high for me. That's not bad. Gave myself a little fist pump. Uh, true story, one time, it was late in the game my senior year, and Bo comes over, he gets, Bo Ryan gets over in his crouch, and the guys behind me are my buddies yelling, we want Saul, we want Saul. He leans over in front of me and he goes, hey, Go see what they want. So it's, uh, <laughs> that really happened. Um, I'll get you on the public course if I can get on your swanky country club. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, Deal. Oklahoma averages, what, 87 points. You lead the league and or you lead the country in field goal percentage. Now, where does defense going to factor in tomorrow? And We're just not going to play any. It's fun to watch scoring. <laughs> Let's get up and down. Let's go all Denver Nuggets, 1982, Dan Issel. Uh, no, I, we, you, you got to figure out the first team to figure out a way to get stops. That's that's going to be very important. And uh, you know, I, I know you look at their defensive stats. I think are skewed because I think they've played a lot better defense as the year has gone on because they've got a young roster that's getting more and more experience. You know, I think you could take some of those games early for both of us probably away a little bit with the refing rules. I know we played some games where free throws were in the 40s for a team. Uh, that's gone away, partially because I think we've taught better and partially because I think the refs have a better ex understanding of what they're supposed to be calling. So I look at the here and now. They're pretty good defensively, and quite honestly, I thought late in the year, we went through a stretch there where we went for two, three weeks without anybody scoring 60 on us. I think we got better, too. Uh, that being said, there's some weapons out on that court offensively. And that, you know what? It's fun to watch those games. This this could be exciting. A couple more questions. If you run out of questions before I run out of answers, that's not that doesn't bode well for you. Come on, I got a lot more time here. Scotty, hop in here. What do you got? <laughs> What'd you have for dinner last night? Anything? <laughs> There's no way I let this press conference die before my allotted time. It's just <laughs> not my nature. Anybody that follows us knows that. Man, oh man. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, mercy. Thank you, brother. I owe you a soda after this baby. We love, uh, we love uh, most of our coaches in Oklahoma, but if we ever, ever have a job opening, would you please apply? <laughs> I just don't stop talking, do I? <laughs> that being said, I'm out of here. No, uh, anybody else? Sorry. Okay, last question. I'll uh, piggyback off that one coach. You know, there, there's so many coaches today that seem to have the Bill Belichick model when it comes to dealing with the media where they're – closed-lipped, closed practices, maybe standoffish, but you're the exact opposite where you enjoy interacting with the media and, and have that energy. So uh, where did you get that from, and how does that fit into your philosophy as far as the game of basketball and coaching? I like the media so much that I sleep with a media member. 
It's my wife. There's no... Uh, <laughs> she writes an article for the forum. Uh, <laughs> Listen, we get, we get so many chances to have this stage, right? I mean, let's face it. We do. Uh, I'm going to enjoy it. This is great. And I think, again, those around me a little more probably realize that I don't have a lot of bad days. I, I've known since I was very, very young, third, fourth. I've, I've always known since, ever, since I've ever thought about what I was going to do for a living. I knew this is what I wanted to do. And you kidding me? Here I sit here, you guys all sitting there listening to me? This is, this is stupid. This is, I don't know how this worked out, but again, I'm going to enjoy it. All right, we'll end with that. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. <laughs> Reminder that Wes Offerman and Ron.